Good afternoon, class. My name is Jay Santiago, and today I'll be presenting on understanding the conceptualization of identity within our class and within um, our several readings. So my general purpose for the analysis, I wanted to um, understand how identity is created through three specific variables, and I identify these in the PowerPoint. So the first one would be Sobriety. So I wanted to analyze and deconstruct the very popular notions of mental health in accordance with behaviors by Native Alaskan communities. And um, for my first point, I wanted to uh, I wanted to clarify that like I wanted to focus on sobriety, not not in terms of like um, whether or not specific groups like drink in comparison to other groups like in a higher quantity, not not entirely that, but more so how they. Um, how these communities or people within these communities are able to maintain themselves and um, practice practice um, practice levels of sobriety that aren't like typically associated with um, traditional means of like Western medical use and how um, how these different groups um, differentiate themselves through these practices and um, other ways. So and then the second point would be food and dietary practices. And for my and for the second point, I wanted to. Uh, I said the drastic changes in subsistence practices and diets when new cultures introduce themselves to the region. So on this point, I wanted to focus how diets change over time, over a longitudinal period of time. And I also wanted to um, explore how, how when consuming different types of foods, um, behaviors get associated with these foods. So for example, maybe subsistence, subsistence practices and, um, and the new this new wave of commercialization of foods where it where like there's a fusion in cultures between hunting and gathering food for like utility and economic pur purposes versus simply buying food at the store and how those like affects different behaviors in the household and within the region. And then for my third point, I wrote mental health facilitation. And I uh, wanted to clarify, I said the alleged prominence of mental health issues in the United States and discussing strategies to help foster more mental health treatments that are that are culturally sensitive. Um, so based on some readings, I noticed that um, when it comes to mental health, there's not a lot of research done, particularly in how Native Alaskans or American Indian groups have um, incorporated their own ways to, to cope with mental health issues and how to identify these problems. And I wanted to understand how, within the within the context of identity, how um, how mental health is portrayed and how people can kind of like process through these issues in a way that is wholly unique and provides new perspective. So I thought um, within my final paper that like the discussion of identity within these three like primary facets was relatively important because um, there's a lot of issues that are like associated with like these hot button topics. So there's a huge prevalence of socioeconomic stress associated with that. So say um, in some of my readings where Native Alaskans and American Indians are like a higher economic disparity than other minorities. Um, that's also correlated with high substance use. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder associated with um, colonialism, that kind of thing. And I um, <clears throat> and I wanted to also focus on how how like these groups, at least within within the Alaskan context, try to different, differentiate themselves from this dominant culture, this this uh, Eurocentric American culture. And also, I wanted to um, at least partially um, deconstruct or um, analyze these stereotypes and prejudices that are associated that are associated with, with Alaskan natives and are extremely stigmatizing, especially at least from my experience in Fairbanks, and it's very uh, debilitating. And then also, um, from my personal experiences that, you know, people within close prox proximity to me weren't exactly aware of these issues, or at least they were aware, but they weren't, they didn't want to um, seek out any new information or like actively deconstruct these stereotypes that are presented to us on a daily basis, especially within Fairbanks and within UAF. Um, especially with the homeless population, people just don't understand how, like, how, like, um, systematically, how, as in, like, our system can systematically fail certain groups of people and ostracize these groups and not really um, facil facilitate any kind of care that would incorporate some of their cultural beliefs. And I also, um, 
with identity for myself as a person of color here in Alaska. It's kind of the same thing where um, stereotypes are pretty prominent within the lower 48, I would say, especially Texas, perhaps, where uh, um, it was kind of the same thing that um, there was like a lot of systems that weren't like they weren't incorporating my um, side of the culture. Therefore, therefore, um, trying to assimilate was a very difficult issue. And I wanted to like really understand it from my perspective and the perspective of Native Alaskan groups. So my first facet, um, identity within sobriety. So I wrote that sobriety is a controversial topic when considering prejudices for um, obvious reasons. So I wanted to focus on this because a lot of discussions, at least from my personal experience and what I've seen like around my social uh, circle, um, it can teeter from the constructive to almost the mildly racist. And I just wanted to, um, I wanted people to just understand that um, sobriety is a very difficult topic for people to discuss and people have different ways of dealing with sobriety and helping maintain sobriety. And, um, and different cultures have different ways of doing that, um, staying in tight-knit communities, incorporating spirituality, that kind of thing. And um, it's also very sensitive for, pe for to, to discuss for people that have uh, family members that are, actively, um, that are actively trying to um, keep sobriety. Um, identity can be constructed through sobriety through various ways. So in the article by um, Hazel Moffat called Cultural and Spiritual Coping and Sobriety, Informing Substance Abuse Prevention for Alaska Native Communities. Um, I wanted to focus at like, they described that uh, Alaska Native communities, at least some of them incorporate this idea of the spiritual, mental, and uh, physical portions of identity to help cope with substance abuse issues. Um, and they incorporate traditional ideology to combat the problem of substance abuse. So they kind of um, focus on on combining these things and all, how all these actions are, uh, instead of like within the physical realm, they extend towards like your mental well-being and your sense of spirituality. And combining all of those things makes one think deeply about their actions and having that kind of like very like deep knit social support system helps people kind of move on and to um, recover. Um, unfortunately though, there's just still a high amounts, high amounts of uh, substance abuse within American Indian and Alaska Native communities in comparison to other minorities. And that could be um, dealt with economic stressors, that kind of thing. Um, for my uh, third, for my second, for my second aspect of identity within mental health, um, I said the point is to understand how mental health is incorporated within the identity of American Indian and Alaska Native people. And I highlighted specifically the coping mechanisms when dealing with mental health and how external help is sought out in comparison to other groups of people. So I wrote trust, language barriers, and cultural differences are a major issue. Um, so within the text titled Barriers to Providing Effective Mental Health Services to American Indians, there's this thing where um, these certain barriers were, were put in place, like not, um, not purposefully, but like just, in, just based on circumstances. So trust is a very big thing. So historically speaking, these contexts um, influence how certain groups were, um, were wanting to approach help and that kind of thing. And, and what happened essentially is this kind of like colonial stress put in place by, by other um, external groups have, have um, laid the seeds of mistrust, so to speak. And in doing so, made it very difficult for American Indians to seek out treatment from people that their ethnicity is not of their own because they felt they've been betrayed. And there's also language barriers. So there might be some disorders, like at least within the DSM, that are, um, that are in English and like they have specific words for specific sy symptoms and syndromes, but some words maybe aren't, are non-existent within other like, um, with other like uh, native cultures. So there's no way for them to uh, to try to like make a direct translation and to find the most effective way to medicate themselves through their language. And it's not, and the DSM or like any other like a uh, way to diagnose people is not entirely inclusive. Um, and then I discussed how mental health issues can arise from socioeconomic stressors and historical contexts, as I have, as I've said, like, so within reservations as well, um, they have like a, severe lack of resources and then because of this there's like no 
there's, there's like no real real like efficient system put in place to to help like facilitate any kind of care and there's not a lot of resources for them to um, for them to use in order to like seek that care and they kind of feel like they've been abandoned and then the third point I wanted to make is um, identity in accordance with food so like food and the behaviors associated with food changes the context in which it's supposed to be used um, what, what, the, the article by Sears titled food and the making of modern Inuit identities was a very important article for this so I said um, it's making clear differentiation between traditional foods and the other foods and the other foods would be quote white people food and there's like different behaviors with that so there's like one specific example from the text where the author went into one of the informants' house. Um, as I as I read um, as I read in the article and I wrote my paper, um, he violated the behaviors that are associated with like these traditional these traditional foods by asking for it. And within within this cultural um, context, within within this this tight knit society, there's a you don't exactly have to ask for the food. It's already kind of implied that you, as a, as someone who's within this house and within hospitality rules and stuff like that, you're able to have some food and it's okay because it's all about preserving one another and like being kind and stuff like that. While um while like while like the behaviors with this with this other food food um white people food, if you uh, if you ask for the behavior if you ask for the food, it's um it's kind of like commanding behavior and infringing on their own um cultural contacts associated with the house and these house rules that are governed by a traditional rule set. And then um, also I noted that um, with identity, identity can change through, um, through food with historical contexts. So um, in the article by Ransom titled Alley Natural Food Economy, there is uh, um, over time you get to see that like the, um, the food they were, they were gathering like shellfish or sea otter and stuff like that were slowly being diminished because of because um, um, colonizing groups were were hunting were hunting like these specific foods in mass, therefore forcing these groups of people to to change their identity in a way that um, diminished the diet in a certain in a certain aspect and had to like adapt to these changing circumstances. So in conclusion, I pretty much said that identity may be forged through a multitude of avenues, um, focusing on these three core facets that I stated, perhaps will allow dialogue and further understanding how someone's identity can change the context of situations and actions, and understand historical implications and how that shapes one current understanding of identity. Thank you for your time. I'll see you guys later. Have a nice break.